Thank you for joining us here today at the Goodlessville Church of Christ with our live stream service. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Uh, continue to watch our Facebook Live and our Facebook page and other social media outlets as we will continue to uh, use those to update uh, the congregation and also uh, continue to watch your email as well as there'll be uh, some updates that will come across email as well. Again, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, let's worship God together. Would you bow with me as we go to our God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning being so thankful for another wonderful day that you blessed us with. Father, we're thankful that we have opportunity to continue to worship together. We're thankful that we have the technology that allows us to be able to enter into each other's living rooms, even though far away. Father, as we go through our service today, we ask that you help us to make sure that we continue to sing from our hearts and uplift your name. Father, we are, are thankful that we have the opportunity to be able to do that. Father, help us to focus on the words. Help us to think of you. Father, as we partake of the Lord's Supper in a little while, we are, are mindful of the sacrifice of Christ. Help our minds to be focused on that. As we, as we pray, allow our, our minds to put things out of the world and focus on you. As we hear a wonderful lesson today from Derek, we ask that you bless him. Watch over him as he presents that lesson. And be with us, open up our hearts and our minds that we might take what is said and that we might apply it to our life. As we are, are faced with these times to, to be at home and to be far away from each other, I ask that you help us all to be... Uh, continue to have servant hearts. Help us to continue to reach out to one another, to serve one another, to, to meet each other's needs as we all need uh, checked on, as we all need to be uplifted by, by knowing that our brothers and sisters are still out there. They're going through some of the same things we are, and we want to be an encouragement to all that we come in contact with. Many of our members and our families here have been affected greatly because of what we're, we're dealing with right now in this country. And we especially ask that you be with all those who we all personally know of who have uh, contacted the virus. Uh, Father, we pray that you will bless them, watch over them. But we also know that there are many who have passed, and we ask that you give great comfort to those families who struggle with being able to have funerals or not have funerals or, or be able to be in person to comfort families. Father, as we continue today, once again, we want to offer up our thankfulness to you 
for all that you give us. We focus so much right now on the negative. Uh, the the news is full with it. The face the, the 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 on Facebook and social media are just riddled with things that cause us to want to be afraid and cause us to fear. Father, help us to to think on those things that are from you, the blessings that you still give, the hope that you still provide, and we're thankful for that. Help us to use this time to study more, to pray more, to grow closer to you on a on a personal spiritual level. Help us at this time when we're tempted to be weak and weak in our faith to be strengthened and to grow closer to you. We're so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful for the teachings he left behind that we can follow. We're so thankful for the, the power that he, he passed on to his apostles that we can continue to read and, and see all the things that they have left for us to be able to, to know in our hearts, to have wonderful faith and great faith, knowing that even through the hardest times we can still uh, have a wonderful relationship with you and know that there is a wonderful hope to look forward to in the future. As we continue through this service, we ask that you uplift our hearts as we uplift our voices and our hearts to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Time is filled with transition. No. Why don't you hold to this hand, to my God's unchanging hand? Why don't you hold to this hand, to God's unchanging hand? You better build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Why don't you hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand? My brothers, hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You better build your hopes on things eternal. Won't you hold to God's unchanging hand? When your journey is completed, You hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging hand. My sisters hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You better build your hopes on things eternal. Don't you hold to God's unchanging hand? Why don't you hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging hand? Why don't you hold to his hand? Unchanging hand, you better build your hopes on things eternal. Won't you hold to God's unchanging hand? Good morning. As we gather around the table this morning, I would like to read from 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this love God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this love, not that we love God, but that He loved and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us the Spirit. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, 
God abides in him, and he in God. We have not come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this love is perfected with us, so that we may have the confidence in the day of judgment, because as it is, so we are also in this world. There is also no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For whom does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment for him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. Let us uh, go to God in prayer. Uh, let us look back upon the cross and that great sacrifice, that, that love that God gave. And Jesus so willingly uh, also loved us that he gave himself for us, for our sins. So let's look back upon the cross and upon that sacrifice as we partake. Our God and Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the blessings of life. We thank you for this time that we have to surround this table, to partake of these emblems. We pray for the bread at this time, which is symbolic of that blood, that body that Jesus hung upon that cross for our sins. We just thank you for that and thank you for the blessings you have given to us for that. We pray that as we partake of this, that we would do so in a manner pleasing to you and you would forgive us as we do so. It's in Jesus' name we pray and amen. Let us pray for the cup. Our God and Father in heaven, we come to you once again, thanking you for this opportunity to surround this table, to partake of these emblems. We thank you for this fruit of the vine, which is symbolic of us, the blood that was shed upon that cross for our sins, that blood that Jesus so willingly gave for us. We pray that as we partake of this, we would look back upon that cross and that sacrifice that you have given for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Walking in sunlight, all of my journey, over the mountains, through the deep hill. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine.
Again, we just want to say welcome uh, to our live stream service here at the Goodlessville Church of Christ. We are so thankful that you have decided to worship with us this morning. Again, we are uh, glad that we're able to have this, this technology to be able to come into your home, and we're just so thankful for that and the ability that we have to be able to worship together with our families and our homes. I know that there have been a lot of people that have been affected by this by the virus. Uh, there's a lot of people that are on the front lines, medical people, uh, first responders. Uh, there's just all kinds of people that out there that are working uh, night and day uh, to try to help people. And so at this time, I just want to take a moment to, to bow our heads in prayer as we uh, pray uh, for those people that are working uh, with this virus. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity that we have to come to you in prayer. God, I pray that uh, as we go through this virus that's happening right now, Father, I just pray that, that you will continue to watch over us and continue to bless us as you have. But Father, right now, there's so many people out there, medical people and first responders and uh, just all kinds of people, Father, that are working right now to help people. And Father, we just want to pray a special prayer for them and just we pray that you will watch over them and that you'll bless them. Father, we pray that you'll protect their health and that they will be, continue to be healthy so that they can continue to help Father, we pray that uh, a cure is ha comes from, for this, Father, quickly, and that we are able to get this out of here, and that, Father, we can come back together and worship once again. Uh, Father, just, uh, just pray that you will bless each one that has been sick. Uh, we pray that you will just give them strength and help them to recover as well. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray that you will uh, give them peace right now and comfort through this time. Father, at this time, we thank you most for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. This morning as we go back to looking at God's Word and as we look at some things here from His Word, uh, I want to give us some encouraging words uh, that, that deal with staying the course. And that's where we're going to go and talk about uh, this morning is, 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 say, is saying to ourselves and looking at God's Word and getting it in our minds and saying, even though we are dealing with this battle right now, even though we're going through this struggle uh, that's happening in our world and all around us, in our communities, even in our families, what does God's Word have to say? What is it that we can use this morning to encourage each other and to help each other to stay the course? You know, there are so many uh, distractions that hit us as Christians in the world. Uh, there's things at every corner that can distract us and that can pull us away from our ultimate goal, and that is heaven. And, and this morning, as we think about that, I want us to, to look at God's Word, and I want us to gain some encouraging words to say, listen, I'm not going to fall away. I'm going to stay the course through this. You know, it's really, diff it's really easy for people, uh, because of what's going on right now and because of the struggles that people are dealing with, it's really easy to fall away from God. It's really easy for us to say, you know what, at this time I'm, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to, I'm going to do my own thing right now. God, why is, why, why is this even happening? If God, if you are who you say you are, why are these things happening? And so this morning I want to encourage us to stay the course. To, to continue to be what God wants us to be, to continue to be that light that God wants us to be. You know, as we look at Scripture, one of the things that we see is that many times throughout Scripture, Satan would use different ways and different methods to try to pull us away from God. And, and rest assured this morning that he is doing things right now to try to pull us away, to try to put in our minds things that will help us, that, that will pull us away from, uh, from Jesus and from God. And so this morning, I hope that we can look at God's Word and we can notice some things that His Word says that, that basically is going to help us to stay the course. So I want you to turn with me, if you would, to Acts chapter 16. That's going to be our text today. As we look at the fact that the battle of life, and we know that life is a battle, even in our good times and even when things are really good in life, it's still a battle. And so even with the battle of life, it often makes us weary. It often tires us out because we just get so worn out with having to deal with things that are around us, with struggles and with trials that go on in our life. But now, if any, is the time for us to trust God now is the time for us to put our faith into action, the faith that we have in God and, and, the, and the faith that we have built 
uh, over our time of study from God's Word because we know that it's God's Word and that's where we get our faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Christ. And so we've built up our faith and and we're drawing closer to God. And, And as we do those things, as we go through these struggles and these trials in our life, I hope that you'll be with me and you'll say, listen, I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I I know Satan's trying to pull me, and I know that that there's temptations out there for me to to, to not do what God wants me to do. But this morning, make a commitment to to yourself and to God this morning and say, I am going to stay the course. And so as we look at Acts chapter 16, I want us to notice some things here that God's Word has to say about staying the course. If we notice in Acts chapter 16, Paul here is on his second journey. And as Paul is on his second journey, just like any other missionary journey that Paul went on, as he was going about and he was starting churches and he was trying to uh, convert people and, and trying to get them to understand what God's will is for their lives and that they are to be obedient to him. And all through these times that he went on these journeys, Paul faced many difficult situations. There were times where he would face situations where he didn't know if he was going to live to see the next journey that he was going on. But he always stayed the course. Paul was one that if we look at as a great example for us, that even in the middle of trials, he stayed the course. And so I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 16 as Paul is on this second journey here. And I want you to notice some key things in Acts chapter 16 that Paul uh, writes about, that he gives us, that we can use in our life today to stay the course. That's what we're trying to do. We have an ultimate goal in mind. That goal is heaven. That goal is to be faithful to God. That goal is to be Jesus to our, pe- to our community and to our family and to our world. That our goal is that we want to spend eternity with God. So how do we do it? What are some things we need to remember this morning? Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse number 19 and verse number 20. Paul here, if you go back up to Acts 16 and verse number uh, 16, uh, Paul is met here by this girl. And she is one that is bringing uh, her owners much gain because of her fortune-telling ability. And so Paul comes in, he meets this girl as he's on this journey, as he's going around and teaching about Jesus and trying to help people to see the importance of Jesus. And this girl comes in and he begins, she begins to bother Paul in verse number 18. But I want you to skip down first at verse number 19 and verse 20 and notice how Paul deals with this situation. Verse number 19, and when her owners, talking about the girl's owners, when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone... Now, if you go back up a few verses before this, Paul had had done exactly what she had wanted him to do. And that is, if you look at verse number 18, the Bible says, She kept doing for many days, Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And so now if we get to verse number 19, we see that now her owners don't have Uh, what they had before because now this girl has been rid of the ability to do the fortune telling and those kind of things. And so now because of that, these owners come along and they're upset at Paul over this. And notice what happens to Paul as we pick up in verse number 19. But when our owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. Notice verse 20 what he says, verse 20. And when they had brought them to the magistrate, They said, these men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. Again, this is not the first time where Paul is in a situation where he is somewhere preaching Jesus, he's talking about Jesus to people, and then he does something like he does here with this girl where he he commands this uh, spirit to come out of her, where he demands uh, that this, this girl not be able to do this anymore. And when this happens... Of course, now the persecution begins. Paul and Silas is dragged into the marketplace, and they basically begin to accuse them of some things. First and foremost, I want us to remember this morning that do not conform, stay transformed. As Christians, we are living our lives to do what Paul talked to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2. And that is that do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
This is our ultimate goal. This is what God, this is what Paul writes about. This is what he wants us to do, is to transform our lives, not be conformed to the ways of the world. In Acts chapter 16, Paul could have very easily conformed to the world and said, listen, I don't want any trouble. I don't want anything to go on here. So whatever I need to do, let me do it. But Paul didn't do that. Paul stayed the course, even if it meant for him to continue to live a transformed life. And so again, when we're trying to stay the course as Christians, in the middle of our trials, in the middle of the things that are going on in our life, let us remember that in order for us to stay the course, we cannot be conformed to the world. It would be really easy for us right now to think about the fact that we are conforming to the world. This transformed life is difficult. It's difficult to do that. And so right now, because I've got so much stress and I've got so much anxiety and I've got all these things going on in my life, it would be easy for us to say, listen, I'm going to put this aside for now and I'm going to do this for a while. But let me encourage you that the Apostle Paul gives us a great example in Acts chapter 16. And that example that he gives us is in the middle of of him being dragged into the marketplace, in the middle of these men coming and saying, this is he is a Jew, verse 20. These men are Jews and they are disrupting our city. Paul says, I'm going to continue to live the life that Jesus wants me to live, and that is a life that is transformed. Never, ever get tired of doing good. I want us to think about that. I want us to put that in our minds this morning. That's why Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 13 where he said the words, Do not grow weary in doing good. Again, Paul wants them to understand and know just like he does in Acts chapter 16, he wants them to know that we cannot be conformed but stay transformed. This is really key for us right now in our situation and where we find ourselves. Number two, I want us to think about this. And that is, we have to stay the course even when others are not. There's going to be people, whether it's our family, whether it's our friends, wherever it is, people in our community, people in in our nation, wherever it is, we're going to see people that's going to draw closer to God. We're going to see people that that are wanting to have that relationship with God now. They're they're going through this. They they don't really have anywhere else to turn. They may have lost their job. They may have lost a loved one. They may be suffering with something themselves. And so all these things, oftentimes what many people will do is is they'll pull their self to God. But sometimes when situations like this happen, people pull away from God. God, why would you allow this to happen? God, I can't believe if you are the true, powerful God that you are. Why are you not taking this away from us? And so many times people will pull away from God. But this morning, I want to encourage us to stay the course. I want to encourage us this morning to stay the course even when others around us may not be staying the course. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse number 1, beginning, But understand this, the Bible says, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self and lovers of money and proud and arrogant and abusive and disobedient uh, to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, uh, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, non-loving good, not loving good, treacherous, reckless. And the list just goes on and on that Paul here writes to Timothy about. And he says, they do all these things. They're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having the appearance of godliness, the Bible says, but denying its power. And Paul writes to Timothy in this, in 2 Timothy, and he says to him to avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sin and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at, the knowledge, at a knowledge of the truth. But I want you to notice here that Paul is trying to encourage Timothy to stay the course, even when others are not. Paul says to Timothy, he says, listen, there's going to be people that's going to be all around you, and there's going to be people that, that, are, that are not going to be, they're going to be lovers of self and lovers of money, and they're going to be slanderous, and they're going to do all these types of evil things. But Paul tells Timothy, he said, I need you to stay the course. And this morning, if I can encourage you any at all, that even when others are not staying the course, I want to encourage you this morning 
continue to stay on the course that God has set before us in His Word to do. Also, as we look back at Acts chapter 16, and we notice in verse 18 and verse number 23, there's another part of this that Paul gives us an example of as he's on this journey, as he's going through this struggle and this trial that's in his life. And as we look at verse number 18, listen to what happens. And, Paul, and the Bible says this, Acts chapter 16 and verse 18, And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to, his, to, to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very, that very hour. I want you to go back up with me, though, to verse 17. And I want you to notice what she was continually doing. In verse 17, notice what, what we find. She followed Paul, talking about this this girl, this slave girl who had this spirit in her. In verse 17, she followed Paul and us and she cried out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim you or to you the way of salvation. And the Bible says she kept doing that. Paul became greatly annoyed because of that. And so if you look down with me again in verse number 23 of this text, notice again what we find. Verse number 23, Acts chapter 16. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, if you remember, this is where they're dragged into the marketplace. Uh, these men are upset at Paul and Silas, and, and, and they say these men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city, and they advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to, to accept or to practice. And, and the crowd joined in and attacking them, verse 22. And notice verse 23, And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. I want us to think about this morning that as we look at our world and our situations that we're living in, I want us to think that it is very, very important for us to stay the course even in the middle of trials. Paul in Acts chapter 16 lets us know that there are some situations, there are some trials, there are some things that he's going through. He has been accused of doing something that he's not. He's been accused of uh, by these men and, and they're mad and the crowd begins to attack them. And listen to verse 23. As we find in verse 23 of Acts chapter 16, And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison. I would say that that is a trial. I would say that Paul is dealing with a situation here where many of us have never dealt with, many of us have never been, and many of us never will deal with that as Christians in our world today. But yet Paul did. And we can look at Paul's life and we can find a great example here of a man that stayed the course even in the middle of trials. James chapter 1 and verse number 2, when we look at that text again, and we've looked at it before, but we look at it again, and James there writes in James 1 and verse 2, and he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into or when you meet trials of various kinds. James says you're going to face them, and you're going to deal with these trials, and you're going to have to go through these trials. But he says, listen, James says in the middle of those trials, what I want you to do and what I need you to do is to stay the course, to make sure that, that, that you're staying close to God. As a matter of fact, in James chapter 1 and verse 2, James wants them to know and us to know that to count these situations all joy, knowing that these trials that we have are going to lead our faith and it's going to build our faith and it's going to grow us closer to God in these situations that we have in our life. And so just like Paul in Acts chapter 16, James in, Acts, in James chapter 1 in verse 2, Jesus went through many trials. Jesus went through beatings and he went through all kinds of things in his life, in his ministry. But yet he stayed the course. He was without sin. Because there was something more important to him and there was something bigger in his life than the struggle and trials that he was going through. There's something bigger in our life than this virus. There's something bigger in our life that we're aiming for. 
And we don't want a, a, a small amount of time that we have that we're having to deal with this struggle that we're going through. We don't want that small amount of time to pull us away from the bigger goal that we have in our life. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 25, a, a very familiar passage to us, but one that I believe drives home the point again as Paul writes to the church at Corinth. And when he writes to the church at Corinth, he says this, he says, Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. Paul goes through there and he lists all those things for those people because he wants the church at Corinth to know, listen, I've been through some things. I've dealt with some things in my life. And you're going to deal with some things in your life. But stay the course. I go back in my mind and I think about the example of Jesus. And when I look at the example of Jesus, because it's a great example for us to follow... My mind goes to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 23. As Peter there tells us that when they hurled their insults at him, at Jesus, the Bible says he did not retaliate. He did not go back against them when they were hurling insults at him. Instead, listen to me, instead the Bible says that Jesus trusted himself to one who judges justly. When Jesus was surrounded by darkness, he trusted himself in the hands of the Father and placed in confidence the ultimate triumph of God. When he was surrounded by darkness, Jesus trusted God. Jesus was able to stay the course because he trusted God. This morning, I hope that we can be encouraged by God's Word. And we can look at God's Word and we can say that in the middle of trials, we got to stay the course. Go back with me to Acts chapter 16 and verse number 25. And I love this passage of Scripture because it's one that I think really brings all this in to really the mindset and the frame that, that Paul's mind was in, even through these struggles. Look with me. At, at Acts chapter 16 and verse number 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. There's a couple of things here I want you to notice. First of all, Paul, Silas in prison. The few verses before that, the Bible says that they put them in the inner parts of the prison. They put their feet in stocks. And now we look at one verse later. In verse number 25, and we see two men that even in the midst of prison, in the, in, in the middle of all these trials, I look at, math, at, at Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, and what I see is, is two men that stayed focused, and they stayed focused on God. They didn't lose where they were. They didn't lose who they were. They didn't lose that, that they're on this spiritual journey and, and, and they're trying to do God's work. They didn't lose any of that, even though they were in the middle of struggles. They stayed focused on God. We know that because in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, as you can just imagine and put your mind at, at, at this prison, that Paul put, put your mind where Paul is in prison, their, their feet are, are fastened in the stocks. And you can just imagine that, that Paul and Silas are there, and, and as they're there in that prison, they begin to pray to God. And they begin to talk to God. And I can just imagine what that prayer was. And I can imagine the songs that they were singing as they were singing hymns to God. You see, Paul and Silas stayed focused even in the middle of trials. There's a second part to Acts chapter 16 and verse 25 as well that I think is just as important as the first part. And that is that the Bible tells us that even when they were singing and praying to God, that the prisoners were listening to them. Why is it important for us as Christians today to stay focused? Why is it important for us to stay on course? It's important because we don't know who's watching us. We don't know who it is that's paying attention to how we as a Christian, those of us that profess Jesus, that claim that we are a child of God, that, that say Jesus is my everything, that I'm going to follow him at all costs, people are watching us as the lights of the world. And they're seeing how we react to it and what we're going to do in a, in a crisis situation. 
And so that's another reason why that we need to, as Christians, make sure that we stay focused in times like this. That we stay the course that God has put us on. In Psalm chapter 119, beginning at verse number 1, I want you to listen to what the Bible says. You're blessed when you stay on course. You're blessed when you stay on course. Walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow His directions, doing your best to find Him. Verse 3 says, that's right, you don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road He set. You, God, prescribed the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps might be steady, keeping the course you set. Verse 6, then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learned the pattern of your righteous ways. Verse 8 says, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk off and leave me. And that comes from the message, but I, I quoted it, I put it there from the message because I wanted that point to be driven home that God has prescribed us a road. God has set our feet on the right way as Christians. Don't get off of it. Don't allow these struggles and these things that we're dealing with, don't allow them to get our course off. But listen to Psalm 119 again. You're blessed when you stay on course. We go back to Acts chapter 16 and verse number 13 or verse number 32. And if we continue reading here, verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. And then we go down here and we find that Paul and Silas begins to talk to the jailer. And when we look at this, we find in verse number 30, even in all of this that was going on, the prison bars were open, people were unfastened, and, and everything was happening. In verse 27, when the jailer walked and saw, awoke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. Verse 28, but Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, trembling with fear. He fell down before Paul and Silas. Then, verse 30, he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What a great question that the Philippian jailer asked Paul here. What a great question it is that, that he comes and, and in fear and all these things that are going on right now. And when we look at this, Paul says this, then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And when they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. Lastly, I want us to think about the fact that even in all of these trials, even as we're trying to stay the course, one way that we can do that is to keep working. Paul in Acts chapter 16 and verse 32, that even in the middle of everything that was going on in his life, Paul kept working. You go back to Acts chapter 14, and when you look at Acts chapter 14 and verse number 19, Paul again going through a struggling situation, stoned at Lystra. The Bible says they stoned Paul and they dragged him out of the city supposing that he was dead. Acts chapter 16 is not the first time where Paul deals with a stoning or a beating or something that's going on in his life for him proclaiming and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But guess what? Even in all these trials that Paul had, Paul kept working. He kept doing what God had set him out to do, and that is to proclaim the gospel to those who were lost. Acts chapter 16 and verse 32, And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. Paul and Silas kept working, even in the middle of struggles. Even with everything that is going on around us, we have to stay the course. 
We have to do and, and, and remain what, in, on the road that God has put us on and, and the road that we've been on. This is not the time for us to draw away from God. This is the time for us to draw closer to God, to stay focused, and to make sure that we're living a, a life that, that, is, that is faithful to God. We are on a journey. We are on a spiritual journey. We are in the midst of our faith walk with God, with Jesus. Now is not the time to lose focus. But for us to stay focused on this journey that we're on. There are many out there that are, that are struggling. There are many that are going through different situations and trials in their life right now. And we sympathize with you. And we want to help you in any way that we can at the Goodlessville Congregation. But we want to, we want to always... Keep in your mind and put on the forefront of your mind always that we are on a journey and we don't want to lose focus on our, of our journey. Whatever we can do here at the Goodlessville Church of Christ to help you to stay focused on that journey to eternity, we want to be able to do that. We want to give you a couple of options this morning in order for us to help you, in order for us to stay connected to each other and to our community. And we want to make sure that, that we keep you connected and that we fulfill your spiritual needs. But also, we want to make sure that we're helping you in every way that we can in this trial, in this trials and the struggles that we're dealing with. If you have a prayer request, if you're asking for prayers for yourself or asking for prayers for somebody else, if you're going through this, this virus situation and you're feeling like I'm right there and I just need prayers, give us a text. Put your name in there. Tell us what you're asking our, your prayers for and be assured that our leaders here at Goodlessville Church of Christ will be praying for you. For those who are needing to respond in other ways, whether it's baptism or, or whether it's asking for prayers or, or whatever it is, we also want to re remind you that we ask that you visit our website and fill out the response form at goodlessville.org slash response. And we'll take those response and we'll, we'll contact you if, if that's what you want. And we'll be praying for you and helping you. This morning as we conclude our lesson, Paul went into the world and as he went in and he was on these missionary journeys, he was proclaiming Christ to those who are around him. And this morning we want to make sure that, that if you're listening, that you understand that the Bible wants us to be obedient to God and he wants us to follow after God. And so we want to encourage you to do that this morning. If, if, it, if baptism is something that you need and you want, we'll do whatever we have to do to make sure that that is fulfilled. If you'll send that request in, we'll be happy to contact you and, and, and meet any need that we can for you. Just as I
Let's close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful for uh, the, the technology that allows us to continue to be together uh, and worship you together and study together. Uh, we're, we're so um, blessed to be able to have this opportunity still uh, during this difficult time. Uh, we want to pray especially for those who are suffering because of this virus in, in so many different ways, whether uh, physically or emotionally or financially and all the different ways that this is affecting uh, our community uh, help us to be uh, servants to those who are suffering and to show them your love. We're especially grateful for the doctors and nurses and medical professionals uh, that are working so hard and exposing themselves to danger in order to help those, uh, those people who are dealing with this virus. Uh, we want to pray for those who are, are laid off or fired or, or temporarily out of work and uncertain about their their financial future. Um, bless them, comfort them, provide them with peace, and help us to be um, examples for them and help them as much as we can of, of dealing with this difficult time. We are want to pray for our children and students who are out of school, who are uh, at home, who have uh, a great deal of time on their hands and, and being asked to be to live their lives in a, in a dramatically different way than what they're used to. Um, be with those children, be with those parents who are, uh, are having to, to stretch themselves uh, and, and help some to become teachers and, and uh, do things that maybe they're not uh, used to doing. Be with those families, bless those families, uh, and, and help them to, to keep their focus on you through all this time. I ask to pray for our leadership, um, our, our church leadership, our elders, our, our ministry staff, um, as they, they plan uh, and, and try to best meet the needs of this congregation uh, as we, we go through this time. Uh, bless them, help them to make uh, wise decisions to uh, keep this congregation safe, but also not stray from you uh, and, not, uh, and, and provide as many people uh, opportunities to, to continue to worship you as a congregation and provide for their needs uh, physically when, when those arise. I also want to pray for our, our government, for the decisions that they're having to make, uh, for uh, trying to, to help Americans and, and uh, financially and physically and, and be as wise as possible um, and help through this time. Uh, we pray for the future of this congregation um, what the several the next several months look like, uh, and just help us to make the best decisions that we can uh, for this congregation. Uh, I want to pray for those who are suffering with depression, uh, with loneliness, uh, struggling with the isolation of not being able to go out and be social, uh, especially within the church, of not having uh, the physical place to go and meet and fellowship and be with the brothers and sisters in Christ, and help us to reach out to those people um, to uh, use other avenues of communication, uh, this wonderful technology that we are blessed with to reach them, to help them, and to serve them. Uh, we'll pray for the financial needs of the congregation moving forward, uh, the, uh, for everyone to continue to contribute for the work of this church that goes on here. Even though the doors may not be open, the church is still working and thriving and doing many things in our community. I ask that you uh, help people move in their hearts to realize that the work must still be done uh, and, and help us through what will be a difficult time. Uh, as Derek mentioned, help us to stay the course uh, through this time. Keep our eyes on you. Focus uh, on Christ always and all that we do. And we are so very grateful for Christ and the blood that he shed that washes away our sins and gives us hope, hope of life forever in heaven with you, O God. In his name we pray, amen. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way.
Trust and